Welcome to Wild Card Wednesday, and welcome to the continuation of the reevaluation of my 2009 ratings for the games that I reviewed during that time. So, where we left off with uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 uh, on the NES was the next game on the cycle. I gave that one an A-, and I still feel that an A- is a deserving grade for Super Mario Bros. 2. I like, I still like how unique it is to the rest of the Mario franchise, and, and it's even more unique now because of how much the original formula has been reutilized, and we haven't still, still haven't gotten a real successor to this game. Yeah, they've reused some of the assets and enemies and characters and functions and whatnot, but not really like in a full-fledged Mario game. I would like to see it. I know that it, you know, it wasn't originally a Mario game, blah, 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 whatever. A minus, it's a really fun game. I'm leaving it at that rating. A minus was also the score or the grade that I gave Yara's Revenge, which is the next game on this list. I kind of, I, 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 there's a part of me that really wants to move this up to, a, to an A, solid A, but um, I don't know, I think that the, the only thing holding it back really, I think, is maybe just like... There could have been a little bit more variety in terms of the enemy shield, whatever the hell it was called. Like, you've got the crescent half-moon kind of looking thing. you got that blockade on one, and then the solid block that, that kind of does this weird rotational thing. I don't know, but I would have maybe... I would have liked to see a little bit more creativity there. It's just those two variations... I don't really think that that's, like, the reason why it's at an A-, minus. why I put it there. I just, that's the way I feel like it belongs. I'm going to leave it at A-. minus. Tanks but no tanks was a C. And, uh, yeah, I feel just about as indifferent toward that score as I do toward the game. Just, like, you know, right in the smack in the middle of the pack. C game. It is what it is, and I'm going to leave it as it is. Silver Surfer on NES, I gave it D minus, and I kind of wanted to bump this up to a D, just on the for the sake alone that the main thing that holds it back is how just ab absurdly difficult it is, and then but once you climb it and you master the game, not that I've mastered it, but I mean once you are able to master it, and without the immense frustration of dying at every turn. It definitely is a better game, but the big problem is how cheaply difficult it is. Yeah, any game, as long as it's beatable, can be mastered. And if it's mastered, then yeah, it can be a much different experience. But it shouldn't be so fucking cheaply difficult. I can't go any higher than D-minus with it. I don't want to give it an F, though. Um, and I don't want to bump it just strictly on the fact that it's difficult. It's, uh, the big problem with it because it should be a factor so d minus is where it's going to stay wizard of war on atari 2600 i gave it a minus and i'm just like thinking about the fact that okay like yars revenge i left at a minus is wizard of war you know in that scale part of that same tier uh is it better you know worse etc and i gotta say yeah it's about this it's really uh, about the same so a minus wizard of war stays right where it is as well Clock Attack was a C-, minus, mainly because of how awkward it is to kind of shift back and forth and shoot. And yeah, it is a pretty tough obstacle to get over. But aside from that, it's not that bad of a game. So I think a C, a solid C even, is probably about where it is. Because I don't think it flirts with a B, and I don't think it flirts with a D, though. So I'm going to just keep that at... Uh, at I'm going to move it to a C and leave it at that. Back to the Future was a D-. And this game is also quite flawed, but I don't think it's that close to being a complete piece of shit. I'm bumping this one up to a D+, and it's definitely better than its sequel, which I haven't reviewed yet, and uh, for good reason. Missile Command on Atari 2600 was an A+, and I think I'm going to bring this one down a peg to just a straight-up A. It's definitely a great game, don't get me wrong, but I think an A-plus is reserved for, like, just those pure perfect games, and as, as much as I love Missile Command, 
I just, I don't know, I just, uh, it's it really, you can't really explain it, it's just I don't feel like it's at that A+, plus, 10 out of 10, perfect game. You know, it's like, it's just, there's something I can't really put my finger on that keeps it from reaching that great of a height. But A is, you know, top shelf. It's definitely a top 10 contender, if not, uh, for sure, a top 10 Atari 2600 game. Mega Man 5 was a B, and I think I am going to keep it there because Mega Man 4 I left at a B, and I feel like 5 and 4 are very comparable, even if they are quite different from each other. I like them both for different reasons, and I feel like there's cons about both of them for different reasons, but I just feel like they're both pretty much at the same level. I'm going to leave 5 as a B. MAD was a B-. minus. I had it back-to-back -back with Missile Command in the Atari review department for a reason. I mean, just look at it. It plays a lot like it. But it is a little different. Um, it just isn't quite as good. It is cool how it lets you shoot a lot of different directions. And, you know, the missiles that drop get pretty fast. It's, uh, it's a pretty decent game, but I don't want to move it up any further. Maybe a B. Nah. B minus. B minus. It'll stay. Golf on NES was a C minus, and I feel like this is more of a C plus. Yeah, it's bare bones, but it's got a certain charm to it that's greater than the sum of its parts. Haunted House was a B, and you know it's like this. I I I, I think this was an. You know, I think I rated a little bit too low. I'm gonna bump this one up to a B plus. It. Some people say it was like the first survival horror game, and it definitely had a spooky jump scare element to it, with uh, you know a lot of suspense, and then all of a sudden, bam! Really nice visuals and presentation, fun game, especially during Halloween season. B plus. Nightmare on Elm Street on NES was a C, and I think this one also gets bumped a little bit to a C plus. I can see. No pun intended. I could see leaving it as a C or even bumping it down to a C minus if you're just like really just kind of focus on the flawed elements to it. But I don't know. I think that it's as much as I always thought it was oftentimes give it a little bit too much flack. Um, it still has grown on me a little bit more over time, a little bit more than it did. So I'm going to make it, this one officially a C plus. Halloween was a C minus. This was kind of like an inferior version of Haunted House with going from room to room and everything like that, running away from enemies, or in this case, uh, the enemy. It goes dark and all that, but, um, you know, on second thought, I think a C minus is just a smidge too low. I'm gonna move this one up to a solid C. Darkwing Duck was a B, and I'm gonna say that that's pretty good. B for Darkwing Duck. That's going to stay right where it is. Freeway on Atari 2600 was a C. And that one's going to stay right where it is as well. You know, it's a cheap frogger. But still not bad. And finally, the last game reviewed in 2009 was Heavy Shredding. Which was an F. And yeah, that's going to stay an F. That game was uh, not fun. So, that concludes 2009's reevaluations. I'm sure I'll do 2010's uh, reevaluations at some point as well. But until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.